America challenged Spain to a battle which took place on May 1, 1898. This was the Battle of Manila Bay. The American fleet was headed by Commodore George Dewey, while the Spanish forces were led by Admiral Patricio Montojo. The Spaniards were defeated, but this event did not mean the beginning of American colonization. General Emilio Aguinaldo returned to the Philippines from his self-exile in Hong Kong, established a dictatorial government. The biggest accomplishment of this government was the proclamation of Philippine independence in Cavite on June 12, 1898. Upon the advice of Apollinaria Mabini, the dictatorial government was replaced by a revolutionary government. The Battle of Manila Bay was fought again between America and Spain on August 13, 1898. But this was just a mock battle agreed by both countries in order to protect the honor of Spain. As expected, the battle was won by America. Led by General Emilio Aguinaldo, the Filipinos continued their campaign towards establishing a republic. Malolos Congress was formed and the Malolos Constitution was written by Felipe Calderon. The first act of the Malolos Congress was the ratification of the Proclamation of Independence which happened on June 12, 1898. The United States and Spain signed the Treaty of Paris on December 10, 1898. The treaty provided that the United States would pay Spain the amount of $20 million as payment for the improvements done by the latter in the country. The authority to govern the Philippines was handed to America. Even from the start, there was friction existing between the Filipinos and Americans. On February 4, 1898, the Filipino-American War broke out. This was sparked by the shooting of a Filipino by an American guard soldier at Pinaglabanan Bridge in San Juan, Rizal. General Emilio Aguinaldo led the Filipino forces in the fight against the Americans. The heroic act of General Gregorio del Pilar surfaced during the war. He defended Tirad Pass in order to give protection to Aguinaldo. Gregorio del Pilar became the hero of Tirad Pass. Other great Filipino generals who led the fight against the foreigners were General Antonio Luna, General Miguel Malvar, General Macario Sakai, General Manuel Tino, General Lucerio Geronimo, General Vicente Lucban, and others. But the effort of the Filipinos in their fight for freedom were in vain. With the capture of Aguinaldo in 1901, the First Philippine Republic ended and the government earlier established by the Americans continued to prevail. On August 14, 1898, America established the military government in the Philippines. General Wesley Merritt became the first military governor. His power was vested on him by the President of the United States. General Wesley Merritt was succeeded by General Elwell Otis. The third and last military governor was General Arthur MacArthur. The greatest accomplishments of the military government were the prevalence of peace in some parts of the country and the preparation for the establishments of the civil government. The Americans introduced a school system where the first teachers were soldiers. There was an organization of the civil courts including the Supreme Court. Under the military government too, local governments were established in towns and provinces. The first local election in the Philippines was held in Baliwag, Bulacan on May 7, 1898. Also during the time of the military government, President McKinley of the United States formed two commissions 
to investigate the conditions of the Philippines and give recommendations in governing the country. These commissions were the Sturman Commission and Taft Commission. The Sturman Commission came to the Philippines on March 4, 1898. It was headed by Jacob Sturman. Which Sturman were General Elwell Otis, Admiral George D. Dewey, Charles Denby, and Dean Wonsister. The Sturman Commission gave the following recommendations. Number one, establishment of bicameral legislature. The members of the lower house would be elected. Half of the members of the upper house would be elected and the other half would be appointed. Number two, lifting of the military government in places that were already peaceful. Number three, conservation of natural resources. Number four, organization of autonomous local governments. Number five, opening of free elementary schools. And number six, appointment of persons with capacities and of good moral character to vital positions in the government. So that the civil government could start in the country, President McKinley sent the Taft Commission to the Philippines. This was headed by William Taft. With him were Dean Worcester, Luke Wright, Henry Ide, and Bernard Moses. The Taft Commission arrived in Manila on June 3, 1900. This commission was more successful than the first commission. It performed legislative function. It was able to pass a law allocating 2 million pesos for the construction and repair of roads and bridges. It was able to set guidelines to be followed in public offices or civil service. It made possible the establishment of other places in the government. It continued the establishment of local governments in the country. By virtue of the Spooner Amendment passed by the U.S. Congress, the civil government was established in the Philippines on July 4, 1901. The first civil governor was William H. Taft, the head of the Second Commission. The executive power, which was formerly in the military, was transferred to Taft. Taft continued being the head of the Philippine Commission. Under the civil government, the Filipinos began their participation in the affairs of the government. Trinidad Pardo de Tavera, Benito Ligarda, Senor and Jose Luzariaga became members, members of the Philippine Commission. Gregorio Araneta was appointed Secretary of Finance and Justice, and the last American civil governor of the Philippines was Governor Frank Murphy.